It is Thursday, about three hours into trading, September 17th. We've got a big market sell-off so far this morning. We're testing the low of the day. Very good chance that we're going to test SPY 332. That's been a major support level. Let's take a look at it, go into the daily chart. You can see how we've had tests of that support level. Also, the 50-day moving average, one, two, three. This is the fourth test. Now, I've been telling you during the last week or so that there are a couple scenarios that could play out. One is that we get a nice, long, lengthy bounce and a higher low retest, and then we're off to the races. The other would be continued weakness, hovering right around that support level, and then boom, another leg lower. That actually looks pretty likely right now. We had a negative reaction to the FOMC statement yesterday. Fed said stimulus is needed. We've done everything we can from a monetary standpoint. Republicans and Democrats are still at a standoff. Doesn't look like a stimulus bill is going to happen. Market's sending in a warning signal right now saying, hey, no stimulus. Be prepared for lower prices. We also have the S&P trading at a PE of 23. Valuations are stretched. That's where the upside lid is on the market. That's where the selling pressure is coming from. With interest rates near or at 0% for the next couple of years, that will always maintain a strong bid to the market. So buyers and sellers are paired off. That's why we're seeing a fairly tight trading range in here. Now, let's take a look at the daily price action. Man, have we nailed it today using the 1OP indicator. This is our governor. It tells us if we should be long or short. We get this big market gap down. Look at that bullish 1OP cross out of a trough right in here. That is an excellent entry point for long positions. Now, as we start getting up into this area here, the indicator is telling us, be very careful. Sell signal, right there. Upward sloping trend line, right there. Breached, bearish. Nice entry for shorts. That's exactly what we did in the chat room today. I was looking for shorts on the way up here because I wanted to see stocks that were weak relative to the market. So I was lining up those short lists and DOCU is one that I shorted. OKTA is another one that I shorted. Uh, those are two of the bigger ones. I can't even recall the others. I shorted the S&P 500. And yes, the market came in. Now we're starting to see some tails under body and a bullish cross right here on the SPY. So I'm going to click alert. I'm going to click on that. Now I've got an alert line if the market bounces above it. I would like to see a little bit of a lift off and another test and then a release. I believe that the support level is fairly strong right now, but I cannot tell you for sure that the market's going to lift off because we could spend time here and then have another big leg down. Now what's happening here is bullish speculators who were buying the dip right in here are now questioning whether or not they want to be long and they could be getting flushed out of positions. Last night I did a swing trading video. I did not take any new positions because the pressure that I've seen is pretty substantial. And I think we're going to take out the support level. If we do, we're going to come down to this 323.50 level on the SPY that was previous horizontal resistance. Now support. I believe we're going to check that. If the selling pressure is fairly heavy, we could actually go down to the 100 day moving average which comes into play at SPY 317.69. So from a swing trading standpoint after a monster rally like that this is strong 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 buying pressure. Swing traders are typically not that nimble to be in a bearish position and to be out of the bear bearish position profitably so the best strategy for you is to wait patiently for those lows to be set a couple of signs that that support is confirmed and that will set us up with an excellent year-end opportunity to come in and buy so that's what you need to wait for if you're a swing trader if you are a very nimble trader day trader who can trade intraday and watch the markets yes we're going to have some shorting opportunities now on these big pullbacks, there are violent snapback rallies, and that is the danger for swing traders. You get short, everything looks good, you go to work, you come home, you turn on your screen, and you're losing money. Because intraday, we have a big market snapback rally. We have a 10-year bull market, we have a 5-month bull market, 
this is not something that you want to toy around with on the short side. But prices are overextended. So yes, on a very, very short term basis as day traders, we are certainly taking advantage of that. And I had mentioned to you yesterday that there are two scenarios that could play out. Binary event, FOMC statement, either the market's going to like it or the market's not going to like it. If the market doesn't like that reaction and we close on the low of the day, you're going to want to take some short positions. And I showed you some. That's the FOMC statement. Initially, it rallied up. Then we had the press conference a half hour later. Did not like what it heard. And this selling right here, there were three shorts that I showed you yesterday. And I'd mentioned to you, if the market closes weak, then we want to take these overnight positions. One of them was ADBE, but we had a little bit of work to do on that one. We had to close below this horizontal support level. It didn't. So ADBE would not have been one that you took. But PayPal, different story. It actually did close right on that horizontal support level yesterday. So you could have carried that one overnight. It's getting close to the 100-day moving average right now. So be careful. That's a place where you'd want to take profits. Look at that relative weakness, okay? Even when the market was up this morning, that orange line below zero shows that relative weakness. It could not catch a bid, draw a downward sloping trend line, and that is your stop. You can draw a more progressive one right like that, and that becomes your trailing stop on the way down. PYPL, beautiful. The other short that I showed you yesterday was ANGI. That stock continued to fall apart yesterday. It closed on its low of the day. You can see right there. Whoops, let me get that symbol in ANGI. And it continued to be weak yesterday. And you can see how it was selling off. Barely even bounced with that FOMC statement right in here, and it continued to sell off. Yes, hold it overnight, continuing to drift lower. That stock has fallen from the FOMC statement at about $11.50 down to $10.73. That is a nice gain. We're going to be looking for a couple of shorts in here, but right now I also want to show you what we're doing on the long side. Market is trying to bounce in here, so let's see if we can find a couple of longs. The 1OP indicator is telling us that we could be getting ready for a nice little bounce in here. Let's see what we can find. We're going to go in, click on bullish. By the way, yesterday I showed you some stocks on the long side, DKNG, loved it. And look at how well that stock is held up. Market down, down, down. Stock pulls back a little bit and starts to rally. This stock wants to go higher. Look, it's above the close yesterday when the market's selling off like this. That is relative strength. That's what we're trying to find. So swing traders, as the market's coming in, this is beautiful because this is the big reveal. This is when we can find the real McCoys versus the head fakers. So as the market pulls back, we're going to be looking for stocks that are strong on a relative basis, on a daily basis. And as soon as we're convinced that we've got that market support, we're going to have some great buying opportunities on stocks like DKNG. LYV, that's the other long I showed you yesterday. LYV is down for the day right now. And you can see that's where the stock opened. It's had some recent relative weakness in here. It's finding support, but it's basically following the market. There's your rally up, your sell-off. So on a daily chart, it's holding up pretty well. But I think the stock can recover. You should not have been long this because yesterday the market closed on its low. And you can see how the stock actually did hold up pretty well yesterday. But the fact that the market had a negative reaction to the FOMC should have kept you out of this long position. Should have been focusing on short positions overnight. So what do we do from here? Well, we've got to see how the day plays out. My suspicion is that because we had a nice bounce right in here and it took quite a while to unfold, that told me that this sell-off right here attracted some pretty decent buying throughout the course of the day. The bid is still strong. Now we're seeing a heavy dose of selling. I think we chop back and forth. If I look at that daily chart, it's going to have some clues for me too. We're kind of in equilibrium right now where buyers and sellers are paired off. On the upside, you've got 
buyers looking at 0% interest rates, they can't go into fixed income because those yields are below the real uh, below the inflation rate, so real returns are negative. They don't want to be in fixed income. They want to be in equity, so they're always looking to buy. However, at a forward PE of 23, stocks are rich. They're very pricey. We don't have a stimulus deal. That's also weighing on the market. If we get a stimulus deal done, we could see a nice rally. So who knows what politicians are going to do. For right now, we have to assume that this range is going to try and hold. If we break below it, we're going to go down to two, uh, 324 on SPY, possibly test the 100-day moving average. But in here somewhere, I believe that we're going to see a nice buying opportunity. So swing traders, be patient. Day traders, look for opportunities intraday. And today, we nailed the opening. We had that beautiful cross right in there. Buy, buy, buy. Stocks with relative strength. And what do we got here? PDD has breached above a price point. And that was an alert that I had set earlier, right in there. This stock wants to go in the gap. You can see how it's trying to bounce. Yes, it's down for the day. Maybe a nice long. And I set that alert earlier. I would like to see a little bit of an attempt at a rally, a little pullback, and then I would buy that higher low on the notion that we continue to reverse in here. Very choppy price action back and forth. Let's see what we've got in terms of relative strength. Going to go into relative strength 30 search and see what we've got cooking there. NVIDIA. I prefer to be on stocks that are up for the day. Okay. I don't necessarily want to be in stocks that have been buried and that are bouncing. I would prefer to have a stock like this. Look at how strong 3M is. It's up on the day when the market is down. Had a little bit of pullback here with the market, but then boom, 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 buyers are right back into it. Take a look at the daily chart. You can see that horizontal breakout to a new high. I like 3M, M, M, M. Definitely would be one that I buy when the market shows me that it's got support here. Take a look at another. Let me go into this part of the video very quickly. That's the beauty of trading stock and not trading the S&P 500. If I'm wrong on MMM and the market yanks down and takes out this low on a big red candle, MMM is so dang strong today that that is my cushion. I can exit this trade, probably even make money on it, and not have my head handed to me. If I'm trading the S&P 500 and I'm on the wrong side of the action, I am going to lose money, period. That's why we trade stocks with relative strength as a proxy for being long the S&P 500. And that's why we trade stocks with relative weakness as a proxy to shorting the S&P 500. But we still use the 1OP indicator to tell us which side of the market we need to be on. That is our edge. If you're searching for an edge and you are a day trader, by all means, you should come in, take the free trial, and watch this system in action. We've got fantastic traders in the chat room. You should see the trades that they've been doing all day. They're in trades right now while I'm doing this video that are taking off as well. Swing traders, same deal. It's that patience. It's knowing what the market's going to do. It's waiting for that right opportunity. It's finding those best stocks. That's why our probability of success is so high on those bullish put spreads. Incidentally, don't know if I mentioned this, we're 100% in cash. We are waiting for that opportunity to set up right now. So, uh, MMM, I like it on the long side. I love that breakout. Let's take a look at PTON. It's also doing well today. You can see how that stock is above the close yesterday with the market getting nailed. That looks good. That's going to be a stock we can day trade on the upside. Not as crazy about this price pattern and that spike right in there, but... Stock is actually looking pretty good right now. Let's go in and take a look at Bull Run, see what we've got cooking there. These are going to be some stop, st strong stocks. Sorry, I'm frothing at the mouth. I'm getting a little excited here because I want to get back and trade this market. So I'm going to click through here and see what else I can find. Uh, Marvell, Zenga, I'm looking for anything that's starting to poke through. Dow looking pretty good in here. Another cyclical stock. I'm going to go into Pop Bull, see what we've got there. GE, 
Nice little breakout above the 100-day moving average. I like that. Relative strength, that could do well. GE, I don't like longer term, so I would not want that. Ford, I'm not crazy about longer term. I don't like some of these cyclical stocks. Automakers, I'm not too crazy about. This is pretty nice above the 200-day moving average. Not my favorite. I think we could find better stocks in this, though. I'm going to look at heavy buying. That's where I really will find some great stocks. I traded Penn earlier. Let's go in and take a look at that five-minute chart. Ah, if it gets through that resistance level right there, I'm interested. Click alert. Double-click on that bar right there. Now I've got my alert line. Maybe it gets dinged while we are watching the video. DKNJ has been super strong. You can see CAT. I've already got my upside alert right here. Take a look at the daily chart. Yes, Caterpillar trying to push to a new all-time high today when the market is down. Yes, that's a stock I would want to buy when the market starts to strengthen. GME has been pretty good. Look at that. I don't care why the stock is up, but I know I've got an alert set on this one right in there. If it starts to get through that, I'm interested. Rad, I traded yesterday. That was a beauty. That's been strong relative to the market. You can see this D1 bounce off of that support level. It's still got the 200-day moving average to get through, so upside relatively limited, but through this downside uh, trend line right in here, it's a weak stock. So not one of my favorites. I'd rather trade strength and stocks that are making a new high as opposed to looking at stocks that are bouncing like this. So that gives you some ideas. 3M, I like. Caterpillar, I like. DKNG, I showed you yesterday. I still like that stock. I've shown you a few others in here as well. So let's go on the downside. Oh, Penn was another one that I like. P-E-N-N. -N. So those are some stocks that I would day trade on the upside i still don't know if i want to take anything overnight i would have to pretty much get into the gap today with the market getting right above the high of the day for me to have any interest going home long tonight so i'm not interested in doing that i'm interested in trading this bounce right here day trading it see if i can find a couple of shorts for you and i need to see a stock that i like on a swing basis before I short it and I've already told you why because the market's been in a go-go bull market rally this stock FTCH is below horizontal support yes that will set up well for a swing short Facebook needs to get through the support level I've got that drawn not ready yet to short that stock CLDR below the 100 day moving average that looks pretty good I'm getting all sorts of alerts right here uh, yes, that looks like a pretty good short, but the downside is pretty limited here because that 200-day moving average is so close by. I want something that's unobstructed, un unobstructed and has a free path lower like this. This is AYX. It takes out that horizontal support right there. It's got lots of room to the downside. Yes, I would like that. SWKS, nothing too interesting there. MS, Morgan Stanley, not a big mover. Man, I'm getting my alerts right now. If I were trading, I'd be checking out all these stocks because those are opportunities. Amazon, looking fairly weak right now. You can see that relative weakness. You can see that gap down here. It's going to check that horizontal support level at the 100-day moving average. Not a big fan until it gets below that 100-day, but then I would certainly be looking at it. PayPal was another stock that I showed you yesterday. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not today. Yes, I did, but that's that was a nice short. Uh, Adobe is in there. Costco we'll take a look at. Costco, if we can get through this horizontal support level right here. You see it? You mark it. Now I've got my alert set. I need. I can see those price points instantly. And all I got to do is drop those lines. Play. Let's see what that's doing. Uh, not too interested there. Apple was a decent looking short right here. Yes. Look at that big spike, that pullback trying to get through this horizontal support level. If it breaches this upward sloping trend line at about $105, Apple's going to be weak. It had its first virtual uh, conference yesterday where it released new products. Very underwhelming reaction. Sell the news? Yeah, probably. So I think Apple could be in for some hardship here. Apple, take a look at the five-minute chart, see what it's doing. See that little market bounce right there? Apple's having a hard time bouncing, but it is above the low of the day. So, yeah, Apple could be a possible short. 
That's about all I've got for you today. I wanted to show you how we go about finding day trades on the short side and the long side, how we do that. Right now, I think the market's trying to decide. It's in this tight trading range between SPY 332 and 342. Buyers and sellers are paired off. It's a real tug of war. The fact that we're down here testing this support level so soon after just about a week from hitting that support level, I think that that indicates heavy selling pressure. We're coming up on quadruple witching. If the price action starts to tick, tick, tick lower today and we take out the low, we could start to see some programs kick in and we could really drift lower. But don't know if that's going to happen just yet. From a trading standpoint, I'm looking for this little higher low right in here. Looking at this moving higher, I will join that. My stop will be the low of the day. I've got to go. i got alerts popping all over the place. I hope you enjoy this content. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications so that you never miss these videos. And we will see you tomorrow. Good luck with your trading. Swing traders, cash, day traders. Look for two-sided opportunities. Markets back and forth. Got a lot of strong stocks and weak stocks. That should be your focus. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers, and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.